Since 2007, Australian not-for-profit Cricket for Kids has received, packed and shipped over seven tonnes of cricket equipment to 18 countries. The journey of Cricket for Kids takes us to the Solomon Islands, where the locals are using equipment donated by Australians to re-establish the game of cricket right across the country. This is a story about the impact some of Cricket for Kids equipment has made on individuals. Really the whole goal of Cricket for Kids is to empower other communities to develop um, a strategy for them to get the equipment over to them. It's good fun when you see kids smiling. I love that concept that when a cricketer finishes with his gear, uh, if he retires or buys new gear, he or she, that their first concept to get rid of it is to contact Cricket for Kids. Cricket for Kids' main objective is to contribute a positive impact on individuals through participation in sport. As a consequence of this, cricket itself grows and develops bringing communities closer together. I'm Max Walker and welcome to the Wisdom of Solomon. As far as I can recall, the cricket started in the Solomons with the colonial administration. Sitting next to a pitch, <laughs> used to be, it was built by the um, British uh, back in the colonial days. Cricket is not new in the Solomons. Uh, when I was a kid, I, you know, it used to be a pastime back in the village, but it's all played by all the people. Uh, it's very popular during the colonial times, mainly in the urban centres like Honiara, Gizo and Aoki. Uh, a Honiara Cricket Association was in existence. Um, there was a little bit of involvement from the ICC and with development in schools. Unfortunately, um, with the tensions, cricket fell away along with a lot of other things. So um, a lot of civil society fell away. Uh, a lot of these sort of programs fell away. Uh, a big part of the role of sport in Solomon Islands is about the idea of nation building. And Solomon Islands as a new country, uh, only independent since 1978, a recent civil war, there are a lot of efforts taking place to reunite the country and bring it together and nation build. And sport is seen as a tool to do that. Playing sports, uh, I'd say it brings people, like especially little kids together, whether you're from, whether you be from Malaita or Guadalcanal, Isabel or Renbel, all the islands. Yeah, um, I'd say cricket, it's, it's a good sport for all, all the islanders coming together. There used to be a thriving association in the Solomon Islands before the civil unrest. And what we would like is to get that working again because we've got the cricket for kids in the schools working very well. I'd been in Sri Lanka just after the tsunami had gone through. So we thought we'd take the cricket equipment down to a little coastal area where the tsunami hit in 2004. We ended up getting about 50 kilograms just from the one club in Wimbledon and uh, took it down to school. Kids loved it and it was a real success. Uh, we then came home at the end of 2007 and, and thought about it for a while and sort of thought that we should try and structure a bit of a system and an organisation and to actually do this concept of collecting cricket equipment, packing it up and shipping it overseas in a bit more of a formal kind of capacity. From that start in Sri Lanka, Cricket for Kids now collects cricket equipment across all states in Australia through a number of different methods. Donations are received from individual players, social and country club cricket, semi-professional district cricket clubs and international players. This equipment comes through website and social media inquiries. Test match equipment drives during the Australian summer and partnerships at a number of Bendigo Bank branches. An important aspect of the initiative is the participation and support of local in-country business in the shipping of the equipment to a community. Any used uh, uh, cricket equipment which are not used in uh, uh, countries like Australia, New Zealand, 
they have a big part to play here in, in countries like Solomon Islands. Uh, look, I think it's great for our club to be involved with uh, cricket for kids. Uh, our boys probably are fairly privileged in many ways, in cricket terms anyway. Uh, they're, they're used to good facilities, uh, they're used to good equipment, uh, they get um, uh, their own training gear. They, they do pay a little bit for it, but uh, they get pretty good training gear. And uh, so, you know, I think from that point of view, they're very spoilt. And, uh, and so I think it's great that, that uh, uh, they understand that there are other people uh, in the world who uh, love their game of cricket, uh, but don't have the facilities and the equipment that they have. It's a great cause for local people. Um, we're engaging people to come into the branch um, through local sporting groups. Um, and it's a great opportunity for clients to, to bring in, I guess, cricket, cricket uh, gear that they didn't require. You know, where do you throw your old gear once you're done with it? Usually it just goes in the back shed or or down underneath the house, but uh, for the boys at Carlton, they were able to uh, bring it in, and it makes them feel good about being able to, you know, keep their gear going on somewhere else. So, and like I said, it's terrific gear. So, why not give it to someone else that can use it? Strathfield Say Cricket Club, 134 years uh, of age in history. Uh, we've just recently had uh, an event to um, uh, represent that. Uh, now, you know, the, the town is and the community is, is growing. And um, you know, we're, I guess, growing into a, an area now where we've got a lot of young families coming through. Uh, and it's important that we have a cricket club established to be able to help bond that uh, community. And with that, uh, we want to be able to provide something back to the families and, uh, and, and the kids into doing so. Now, we've been able to form a partnership with Cricket for Kids. And um, I think that represents well with us being able to not only now do something in the community, but now we can do something on a whole worldwide sense. And that's by providing that, that equipment for those, those uh, the people and countries who are in need for that. I had a fair bit of involvement in some charity work in Adelaide at the time while I was still playing. Um, and I, I sort of stored it in the back of my head about wanting to get involved with Cricket for Kids. Um, as a professional sports person, you know, you obviously get given a lot of uh, stuff for nothing and um, as a cricketer, uh, the amount of equipment that you get these days, um, pretty fortunate and uh, the chance to help less fortunate people uh, in some small way really appealed to me. We're building this model now where Benigo Bank branches will, who are working with cricket clubs will go and organise cricket equipment drives on our behalf and also collect equipment in the branches themselves and then we coordinate those equipment drives and, and collect the gear and then ship it up and, and send it overseas. So we get, um, we liaise with businesses over there and, and offices over there. There's a bit of self-ownership in, in, in helping uh, the equipment to come over and it also helps, um, it helps probably the sustainability of the program as well because if the, if the businesses are involved then they will continue to see what goes on on the ground with the equipment drive and hopefully that means that they will then continue to support any future development of the cricket programs that we do. We have uh, five main partners uh, at the moment, Credit Corp being the largest and also Seba Water, um, Toyota has is, is, um, given a sponsorship uh, Sullivan's and eWorld Technology who sponsor our, our uh, Schools Cup. But it's incredibly important. Um, there's so much uh, support in the local community, so many people willing to give. In particular, uh, the equipment we receive from Cricket for Kids, uh, we receive free shipping from a local business here, Sullivan's, and so they ship it from Australia to Solomon's for us for no cost, uh, which is a massive boost because it takes all the pressure off us uh, having to come up with the funding or the transport, it means we have that support to, to get on with our job of distributing it. So local support's crucial. Uh, we hope it continues. Plenty of support out there and we're very grateful for it. Okay, but being a corporate citizen, I think we have a part to play uh, in uh, uh, developing our young people around to become good good people, uh, take them out on the street, have them engage in um, various activities and sports is one of the key uh, 
uh, elements that uh, uh, is good for, 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 for young people. The impact of uh, equipment that we have received from Cricket for Kids has been uh, enormous and, and a substantial part of our development program. Uh, being a developing program working with limited budgets and limited resources, we don't have a huge allocation of allowance to be able to, to purchase that sort of equipment. Uh, I think also the time that would go into sourcing some of that equipment as well uh, would make it incredibly tricky. At the beginning of 2013, Cricket for Kids sent 200 kilograms of equipment to the Solomons for the establishment of the Piccaninny Schools program. A further 120 kilograms was taken by the documentary film crew to the Solomon Islands who ventured to different schools to distribute bags of bats and balls and pads. The school cricket clinics occur weekly across the islands, proving to be a real hit with the children. This program has engaged children in sport, having fun. We um, went up to one of the local schools and um, they were good enough to uh, give us a couple of hours of their time and uh, we presented a bag of equipment came all the way from Strath Hill and um, it found its way to the middle of the Solomon Islands in Honiara and it was just uh, it was a terrific day. You know, I've heard it, heard it all week of, of what we've been doing from everyone to, to see what we do in Australia and to see the equipment over here has been pretty special. The growth of this school's program has led to employment of two local staff. They really enjoy what they do. They surround this area to play cricket, even people watching. They they really know that this is the, the real game, that the people, they really enjoy what they do in this game. Today was a beautiful example. We had a, a school that we went to where the kids were playing with the gear for the first time and they were just beaming from ear to ear. It was, it was fantastic to sort of see that end product of all that sort of work that we've done over the years. When you live in a country uh, like a lot of developing countries where official unemployment rate is, is through the roof and a lot of people rely on subsistence living, uh, or a lot of uh, population migration into urban centres, it can be extremely challenging to find uh, some form of employment. I was uh, looking for to be uh, like uh, one of uh, the good developer. Yes. And my focus is I like to be a man who some some somehow people they are looking at at him because of from now I have started to doing de developing until where I'm gonna reach and I am I am supposed to be giving ideas to people helping them doing things so I am looking forward to be a man a great man for helping up people everywhere. David's impact. Uh, on the community as a leader, uh, providing opportunities uh, to young people to get involved, um, setting an example, showing the way um, is, is, is quite significant. When I was working in cricket, then it helped me a lot on giving things and even helping people, learning, and even the kids, they are really happy and they they interest on what I have been doing. So. Everywhere I go, kids, they really happy and they see me, hey Dave, how are you? What time will do the training? So on that thing, I'm, I'm really enjoyed because I I'm, I'm, could be a man that everyone's, everyone's love to see me. In terms of David's role with Cricket Solomon Islands, we see him as being a long-term investment in cricket in the Solomon Islands. And we already view him as a leader within his community. So we've... Uh, we provided on-the-job training for him to, to get him up to speed, um, to teach him how to teach cricket and facilitate. But as part of his ongoing development, uh, we plan on sending him to a youth, a Pacific Youth and Sport Conference in New Caledonia to really affirm to him that we see him as part of the bigger picture for cricket and that we're interested to invest in his development personally as well as the development of the game. So we're providing opportunities outside of the scope of their role 
uh, to show that they are a big part, that David and Bobby are a big part of our operation and that we want to continue in, to invest in them as much as we want to continue to invest in cricket. My role is um, I'm working with um, the Solomon Islands Cricket um, is to um, do more of the admin stuff. Um, yeah, so I'm um, writing letters and um, sorting out places to go, which schools to um, um, help out with the cricket um, program. And um, I see great potential for cricket in the Solomon Islands, especially with the little kids. Um, the schools that we go out to, um, yeah, there's, there's a, f a fair bit of um, potential. Uh, little kids having a lot of potential with this kind of sport. Where you see um, little kids having fun and trying their best to at least keep their arms straight <laughs> as they're bowling and <laughs> batting. After distributing gear to the schools, it was a real treat to play a 10 over exhibition game on the national soccer pitch, the Solomon Islands MCG, Lawson Tamar. This was an opportunity to give away the Carlton Cricket Club clothes and demonstrated the enjoyment and individual impact the re-emergent of cricket is having with older locals. For us to have that opportunity to grow the game in another part of the world, to have even some small part in that uh, in that growing of the game I think is, uh, is really beneficial and, uh, and something that we really, uh, I suppose, are proud of. Uh, to see it being used in the Solomon Islands is something that uh, I think really gives us a lot of satisfaction as a club. Well, me from Gorang uh, Plains, where me, me take some time blame for come down and come join him this uh, game blame me today. Uh, new games, I uh, make them new thing thing too. Look at Pekinini for what uh, um, how I got us away blame, yeah. So, him now me like was it me happy to us, me happy to us. Uh, I'm a little bit fun for me, complete cricket, and good spot for me too. Okay, um, for me, team stuck of friends, and him good for me for come and then play cricket. So, me sorry that. When we go back to the community, blow me. Okay. Me teach him what to have to play cricket. Uh, me hitting one ball for today, so we are happy for good. Okay, okay. We are a nice one now. First of all, blow me now. Lo, since we started cricket. Yes. So, okay. and then, yeah. They not give you a camera. I say, me my best player today, so. Waiting, but blow me, I think, but me learning one there. Uh, me part of a feel happy to myself yeah? okay. because I mean, every call me a time small boy yeah. because I mean, kind local one lo home, yeah, okay, okay. Have a problem, kind, yeah? but them local one, so time me looking to them, so I think this one I'm really one. So I'm not one of them, me, me interest to myself yeah, for calm, and uh, I mean, I learned a lot of things about them just for a small uh, game we in between today. Part of the, the ICC membership that we're trying to achieve, uh, we, need to, we need to get a four-team junior comp and an eight-team senior comp up and running. So the equipment from Cricket for Kids uh, directly helps us achieve those things. Well, once we get organised and a, a bit of training underway with some of the skills, then at least we've got something we can play cricket with. It is where I've been trying to encourage the Cricket Association to focus all their attention because this is where you will get the numbers and we have the time to focus on training and things like that whereas in Honiara it's very difficult with transport and getting around the city. If we can identify people or you know identify kids in this age group who have the skills to play the game they could be the real leaders of the game and the forefront the forerunners of it. Uh, so if we can instill a passion for the game in them, you know, they, can, they can sort of work into the junior comp. There's fantastic opportunities not only to play locally uh, but internationally. Um, we're looking at sending an under-16 team to the mini games in Papua New Guinea in 2015. To try and uh, grow the game in this country to diverse communities, um, whether that be uh, indigenous communities within our own country or, or in the Solomon Islands, I think it's fantastic. And, uh, the game needs those sorts of talent because I think there's an amazing abundance of talent in, in these sorts of areas. You know, 
if we can help influence and help influence now other clubs, and that's just not within the Benio area, that's now on a, on a national sense, if we can get this message out um, and provide such a big difference. I mean, the impact uh, is going to be massive, and I think you'll see that then flow 10 to 15, 20 years' time in some of the young um, young cricket lovers in those uh, nations you know, start to, to get to the 15, 18, 20 years of age, and you know, hopefully we've, we've made that difference. I think the to see cricket programs here established are the result of a lot of time, effort and hard work by a lot of people. And to see the fruit of that come through is incredibly rewarding. A lot of frustrations and challenges and setbacks uh, along the way. But um, at the end of the day, what we're here to do is, is to put a smile on kids' faces. You know, I, I get to see my old bat hitting a few balls over the fence so it, it really makes me feel good um, that I can you know keep donating gear and, and um, keep you know handing over my old stuff so that other people can use it. Make sure that we enjoy our mates around because for me it's the lifelong friendships that you can build that's important. And so you may think it's a small contribution but the impact, the ripple effect that it has on the ground is enormous. Um, just to receive a bat or a ball or something related to cricket and you see them overjoyed and all these smiles and happiness you can see in their faces um, it, it just gives me joy. Have people understand that they make a massive difference not just to the game of cricket they make a difference to the people that run the cricket games that employs people and uh, it's all for the greater good. We make the cricket equipment collection just an absolute mandate on all cricket clubs that that sort of growth is what we need and we need help with that. This is where you were two years ago. This is where it is now. It will make a big difference. To be part of Cricket for Kids and contribute to the impact on individuals in the Solomons across Australia and throughout many other countries, find us online. I'm Max Walker and thank you so much for watching. Jesus Christ, quat yo abun kalogeno, ana e foli calvary, quema ok no kwaita, cause no make a Mary's no, or a land why quema ki. Rugo fwan kere titi Kwe ima lan wa kes di ago Kwe ima lan so Jesus Christ Kwa tiu abun kalogeno Ana e foli calvary Kwe ima ok no kwaita Cause we may come with no Cause we may come with no